Okay, good morning. It's uh, what is it, August 15th. Thursday, August 15th. And, uh, it's about 8.30 in the morning here. We just crossed into Oklahoma. We're on our way back uh, to Georgia to deliver at a Walmart. Uh, we got to do a, dry, a swap in California so we didn't have to sit for a whole day so uh, this is good because you don't make money in trucking unless the wheels are turning the hardest part about truck driving is the sitting and waiting the dropping and hooking and these are the things the hardest things you do in truck driving you do not get paid for if you believe that it's uh you get paid only for when the wheels are turning. You don't get paid for all the dropping and hooking and sitting and waiting that you do out here. So Anyway, we're in uh, Acts chapter 4 doing a survey. I'm doing a quick survey through the book of Acts. Uh, all I really want to do is encourage you guys to, to study that book. Uh, quick review. Uh, we're in the Jewish section still the very Jewish section. And uh, Acts chapter 2, the Holy Spirit came for the first time. The church started. Uh, 3,000 were saved. And then here, uh, Peter preached again. And 5,000 men of Israel were saved. And uh, when you get a big revival like that, the devil's not going to let you let that go on very long and he's not here in the book of Acts either he's getting riling up the Sanhedrin again the Sanhedrin that's the uh, Jewish authority Uh, they're the ones that got Jesus crucified and uh, Peter uh, we stopped the other day in uh, verse 12 where he said neither is there any other name under heaven whereby a man should be saved and then now you got the Sanhedrin going to pop into this picture and they say uh, now when they perceived when they saw that uh, the boldness of Peter and John see when you get filled with the Holy Spirit of God uh, there's a boldness uh, that comes over you and then when they see the, the boldness of Peter and John and perceived that they were unlearned and ignorant men, uh, they marveled and they took knowledge of them that they had been with Jesus. Evidently, these guys knew who Jesus was. Of course, it's not that long ago they had crucified him, sent him up to Pilate, remember? That was the Sanhedrin that did that. So they took knowledge that he'd been with Jesus. Now, instead of just going ahead and saying, okay. Did you see them goats? (laughs) Instead of just saying, okay, look, there's a... This could be our Messiah. Uh, They're still rejecting him, of course, because, you know, they... Nobody wants to lose their power. And they, uh, the Sanhedrin had a lot of power over the people. But the, uh, the man uh, was healed uh, that was at the beautiful gate of the temple. And uh, we're still dealing with that. And the Sanhedrin said that uh, these are... These are unlearned and ignorant men. Now, that's what they perceived, which I don't believe that's true. But a lot of people, even in the Christian uh, church today, if you have not gone to Dallas Seminary or Liberty College or uh, Temple, uh, Tennessee Temple, or if you haven't had uh, 25 years of Greek and Hebrew... Uh, you're unlearned and ignorant and uh, not qualified to pastor a church or anything or to be an evangelist and that is the biggest crock uh, 
uh, in the world. A lot, uh, a lot of the educated, the only educated guy really of the apostles would have been uh, Paul. Uh, he was trained uh, under the Sanhedrin and uh, maybe Matthew uh, had a little education and uh, of course Luke was a doctor but most of them were commercial fishermen folks and uh, God calls a lot of you know the best some of the best preachers I've ever heard in my life have been these old mountain guys that uh just gotten the word of God, probably never been to a Bible college. There's nothing wrong with going to Bible college. I'm not saying that. I'm just saying you don't have to be uh, highly educated to be filled with the Spirit of God and teach the word of God. I went to a Bible college and, uh, you know, I, I'm sure it helped me some, but I don't hold that uh, uh in high regard, most of my learning came from just the study of the book and by the Holy Spirit of God teaching me. So unlearned and ignorant men, and they said, now wait, we can't deny this, and I'm paraphrasing, but the Sanhedrin said, we can't deny this, uh, that what they did, they healed this guy. This guy's over 40 years old, they said. And uh, he's been sitting at that gate all these years, and all of Israel, all of Jerusalem, knew who he was and now he's been healed and uh, thousands of them have been uh, converted into Christianity and so they said well what we'll do is we'll call them aside so that that's what they do they call Peter and John aside and they say okay don't teach uh, by the name of the Lord Jesus or they didn't say the Lord they didn't believe he was the Lord but they they said, don't teach uh, in the name of Jesus anymore. Uh, but Peter said, Peter and John answered and said, uh, whether it be right in the sight of God to hearken unto you more than unto God. Judge ye. So there is a point, you know, you're supposed to pay your taxes and you're supposed to obey the laws of the land. But there's a point where uh, it's more important, and it's going to get that way in the tribulation big time, where it's more important to obey God and not the laws of man. So they threatened them some more, and uh, they let them go, uh, finding nothing how, nothing that they could punish them uh, because of the people. Now, again, they're afraid of the people. And so are all the big, uh, you know, the big to-dos in the churches. Uh, preachers having, teachings ha having itching ears. They're talking to their great big congregations and they got them all under control. But uh, they, they're going to say what they want to say and not what uh, anybody else does. And it says the guy was over 40 years old, and uh, they let him go. And so the disciples go back, and they tell what happened. Uh, and uh, Peter gets up, and he preaches again. And he talks about uh, the Pontius Pilate, and they, they turn Jesus over to Pontius Pilate. People of Israel were all gathered together. And then uh, it goes into, and this is where Karl Marx gets a lot of stuff. It, uh, it goes in at the end of uh, chapter 4. And I'm, I'm going quickly through the narrative. You can read it for yourself. Uh, they were all with one, one accord again. The Holy Spirit is uh, moving uh, like he's never moved in the history of mankind and they're selling their land and they're selling their goods and they're bringing them uh, to the apostles and the apostles are distributing it nobody's in want everybody's uh, in their little uh, Christian utopia I guess you could say 
And uh, this is where a lot of the communists will say, well, you know, communism is scriptural because of this. Well, it's only scriptural if God's running it. Uh, as soon as man get involved, which we'll see in uh, chapter 5, as soon as man gets involved in uh, the commune, uh, you know, the love of money is the root of all evil. And somebody's going to get greedy, and somebody's going to hold back, and somebody's going to do this, and somebody's going to do that. So it doesn't work uh, at all. But they're at the beginning of the church, they're all together. Uh, they don't have anything uh, to want for because the rich in the group were giving away their land and everything. Evidently, this is something sort of what happened in the book of Thessalonians because, remember, Paul was uh, telling them that they should work. There were a lot of busybodies uh, sitting around, and this is what happens when you get in a communist situation or a, a commune like that. So you got the payers and the takers, and pretty soon they've used up all the money that the uh, people have sold their land and gave to them and then somebody's got to pay for it and nobody else can pay for it so that's why communism doesn't work it runs out uh, sure it's great to give free health care and free insurance and free this and free that the problem is none of it's free somebody's paying for it and uh, as you get more and more into communism they get more and more dependent on the government and uh, less and less dependent on themselves, and then they uh, grow entitled and expect all this stuff and start their uh, protesting and all that good stuff, and then it just falls in on itself because they run out of money because eventually the people that are, you know, the 10% that are paying for all of the people, uh, they'll go broke too, and when that happens, then it doesn't work anymore. Anyway, that's just a quick run through the chapter 4. I know I did a quick, uh, very quickly, the narrative's going to start uh, going a little faster. Just remember that the uh, book of Acts, we're still in the transitional book. It's a progression, folks. The gospel is a progression. And uh, I hate that noise. And they, uh, so they healed that guy at the beautiful gate he's leaping and jumping around 8,000 uh, men have been saved since the since the Holy Spirit came and you would think the religious leaders would be full of joy and joining the cause but no they're causing strife they still won't believe uh, in the Lord and Peter is still talking to uh, Israel as a nation. Now you got to get that. All right. Now they all came together. There's about 8,000 men. There's probably a lot more women and children. And they're all uh, in one, come together in one accord. And they're starting to uh, uh, sell their goods and bring it to the common good. And that's what's happening right now at the end of chapter 4. And we'll pick up uh, in the book of Acts chapter 5 tomorrow. I hope everybody's uh, doing well. I hope that uh, you have a great day uh, the 15th of August. And uh, may the Lord bless you and read your Bibles and pray without ceasing. God bless each and every one of you. Amen.